Okay, so us guitar players are a pretty finicky group of people. When we find something we like, we tend to stick to it, and in some cases even defend it to the death on forums and message boards and comment sections all over the internet. Now, while I tend to stay off of the forums and message boards and comment sections, I am sometimes guilty of this sort of fundamentalist way of viewing guitar and guitar gear. I'm guilty of believing that the way I do some things is the best way to do them, and uh, occasionally, I'm proven wrong. So yesterday I went over to Rick Beato's and did a video with Rick and Dave Honorado and Ken Lanyon. If you haven't seen it, you should absolutely go watch that video first and then come back here and check this out. I'll have it linked down below. But essentially the gist of it was, does string gauge matter? Does the size of the string have an effect on the tone of your guitar? Yes, anyone who has switched string gauges before will tell you there's a definite difference between the playability and feel of a string and definitely a difference in the tone of a string. And up until yesterday, I always thought that thicker, heavier gauge strings were better. There was more tone there. And quite frankly, I was proven completely wrong in Rick's video. We took his Les Paul and strung it up with 11s, 10s, 9s, and 8s, played into the same rig, the same riff, and I have to admit, I liked the lighter gauge strings. Now, this is a big deal for me because for years, this was one of those fundamentalist sort of views I had in terms of guitar. But yesterday in that video, I found that I might actually prefer lighter gauge strings. For years I've played 10s, and at some point I even played 11s on my Gibsons, on my ES335, played 11s on that for years, again, because I thought, oh, well these sound better, there's you know more tone. But yesterday, I saw the light, and this is a follow-up video to Rick's video. I'm gonna swap the strings on some of my favorite guitars and see if I really prefer lighter gauge strings or not. The reality is I'm making this video for my own purposes. I'm using it as an excuse to record and test my guitars on my rig with the sounds that I like to use live and when I'm writing and recording. I really wanna see if these are better. It's one thing to go to a friend's studio and play their stuff on their gear. This is for me. I wanna see what's better, tens, nines, maybe even eights. So I just went down to Guitar Center, bought five packs of Ernie Ball Super Slinkies. These are nine to 42. And I'm gonna swap out the strings on my primary guitars, starting with my Novo Ceres J. This is my number one guitar. And I wanna start with this one because of the bridge. On Rick's video, we were playing a Les Paul with a Tunematic bridge. This is a completely different bridge design in almost every way. But before we get started, if you're new here, welcome to the channel. I post videos every single week, so be sure to hit the subscribe button down below and click that bell icon to be notified when I'm posting new videos and going live here on the channel every Sunday night. So with all that out of the way, let's get started. Right now I've got standard 10 to 46 strings on the Novo. We're gonna play this, use a couple of different sounds, and then we're gonna swap the strings and see what happens. All right, so we're gonna be using my Hi-Watt Custom 20 here, going through the matching 212 cabinet that's loaded with fanes. And I've got those speakers mic'd up with a blue Encore 100i, which is like an SM57, and a Sennheiser MD421. And those are going into two preamps from Great River Electronics, the MP500Vs, and from there, going into Logic. Pretty simple signal chain. We're gonna use that for the whole video. Let's start with the tins on the Novo Ceres J so we can get kind of a baseline.
Okay, so next I want to try some effects. Again, the point of this video is not to do the super scientific direct head-to-head -head between the tens and the nines. We already did that in Rick's video. This is to see how it fits in with my style and my sound and my rig. So I've got my main pedal board on the floor here going straight into the front of the high watt and I'm gonna go for some sounds that I commonly use. My favorite overdrive sounds, some fuzz sounds, some delay and reverb. And then we're gonna compare that against the nines. My thought is that the nines are gonna be more clear and more bell-like and possibly cut through the mix better, especially with the effects, but we'll see. So I just got done listening back to both recordings, the 10s versus the 9s, and there's a pretty dramatic difference to my ear. Now, the difference in the top end, the clarity, the 9s are obviously more clear, but part of that has to do with the fact that these are brand new strings fresh out of the pack. Now, the 10s that were on this guitar were only about two or three days old. I just restrung this the other day, but there was some oxidation. They're not as fresh as these slinkies right out of the pack. So that is part of the reason these were a little bit brighter. But that's not the difference that I'm interested in. The biggest difference is in the low end. The low end on the lighter gauge strings is much tighter and more direct, it's less flubby, and it's really apparent to my ear when I'm using reverb and delay. It's also helping a lot in my overdrive signal. I'm using the Mythos Mjolnir and the Paul Cochran Timmy, both individually and stacked together, and the tighter low end to my ear is helping that overdrive sound punch through and cut through a little more than it did on the 10s. Now, again, if you watched Rick's video, that was 
pretty much the conclusion that we came to. I'm not breaking any new ground with that in this video. And the other thing is, if you want tighter low end or more clarity, there's multiple ways you could go about doing that rather than switching the string gauge on your guitar. I mean, this amp, for example, has a three band EQ. If I wanted a tighter low end, I could simply turn the bass and maybe some of the mid control down a little bit. Or if I want more clarity, just turn the treble up. So it's not really the difference in tone that I'm after here. The thing that really struck me in Rick's video yesterday is when I was playing that Les Paul, when we switched from the 11s to the 10s and then the 10s to the 9s, I noticed in my playing that I was a lot more comfortable. And when you're more comfortable, you play with more confidence. And when I just swapped to 9s on this guitar, I noticed a similar effect. Guitar is easier to play, which means I'm playing more confidently. I'm going for bends, they're easier to hit. My vibrato feels easier. It feels easier to grab chords. And even in the right hand, the way the pick is interacting with the string, it feels like I can dig into the guitar a little bit more and just pull some more grit out of it. And now for proof of concept, and in the interest of being thorough, I'm gonna do the same thing to my Les Paul. There's tens on here now, and this is a different scale length than the Novo, and it has a completely different style bridge on it as well. So I'm gonna play the tens, swap them out, and see what the difference is. So as you might expect, there's similar results with the Les Paul. More clarity, which is partially due to the fresh strings, but also tighter and more focused low end and the mid range, I think is a little bit more present in these humbuckers. And that is one difference between the humbuckers and the single coils, the P90s and the Saris J is the mid range is definitely more present here with the nines. But again, I really like the feel of the thinner strings even on the different scale length and with the different bridge design. It feels easier to play, it's more engaging, and I'm just more comfortable overall. So I'm the type of player that usually has a pretty heavy touch on the guitar. I really dig into the fretboard, which honestly isn't great. It's a little bit harder to play with finesse and dynamic when you're really gripping the crap out of the fretboard. And so I think the thing that's really drawing me to the nines is it's forcing me to lighten my touch. With these lighter gauge strings, if you dig in super hard, you're gonna pull the note or the chord completely out of tune, especially if you have tall frets on your guitar. And so as I'm playing, these lighter gauge strings are forcing me to play with a little bit more finesse and a lighter touch overall. I can play licks a little bit easier that were challenging me before, Again, it's not a huge difference, it's not night and day, but it is there and it's noticeable. Noticeable enough that I think I'm gonna switch to nines on pretty much all my guitars now. Now again, this is subjective and your mileage may vary, but to me, the important thing here is to be more open-minded about these kind of ideas. Yes, I realize in the grand scheme of things, string gauge on your guitar isn't all that important, but it taught me a lesson, which is when you think you've got it figured out, that might not always be the case, and you should be more open to take in other ideas and different perspectives. Not to get all philosophical on a video about guitar strings, but let me know what you think in the comments section down below. What gauge strings do you play? And would you be willing 
to switch, to try something new. Like I said, if you haven't seen Rick Beato's video on this subject yet, check it out. It's linked in the description box down below. If you like what I'm doing here and you want to support the channel, there are links down below as well where you can buy t-shirts, coffee mugs, you can get access to my Helix presets and my Kemper profiles, and you can sign up for the Green Room down there. The Green Room is a monthly subscription which gets you access to a private forum where there's lesson of the week content going up. I'm also putting up new tour dates now. Those are linked on my website down below as well. That's all for today's video. Hope you enjoyed it. My name's Rhett Shaw, and remember there is no plan B.